we're talking about sexual orientation. It's like, it's like, Lexi, let me ask you this, for example. When, when did you first realize you were straight? Um, I said you weren't going to talk, and now I'm asking you to talk. So, um, But that's a pretty easy one. I feel like I already, like I always knew that I liked boys. You always knew you were straight? Yeah, I don't think like there was a certain point where I was like, oh, I'm straight. I think I just always knew. So you, so as far back as you can remember, and did you ever question it at some point? Mm, no. <laughs> did anybody around you ever question it? No, you it really any, like... wasn't talked about where I was growing up. Uh-huh, okay, so really it's just... It was really just like... Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, okay. Given. Dude, so, mm -hmm. by the way, that's a question that straight people don't ask themselves nearly enough, right? When did you, has anyone ever asked you that? When's the first time you realized you were straight? No. Yeah, I mean, we don't, straight people don't ask that question very much. We ask it of people who are gay, which is what I'm going to do with Juan right now, but a lot of times straight people just don't ask that. So Juan, how about you? When did you have the first inclination? Um, I got like in eighth, eighth grade. Eighth grade? Yeah, pretty much. And just, was that like thoughts, feelings, just something? Uh, yeah, I just like realized like um, I was attracted to men. Like, you know, like that type of like purity, that kind of stuff, like that kind of time. Uh -huh. I got like that when I realized, I guess. Mm -hmm. And when you say you realized, it was just like an inner knowing. Yeah, yeah. And when did you like come out? Like physically, I guess, yeah. When did you come out? Um, like to my parents or like to the... Yeah, to anybody. How about to yourself? So in eighth grade, you came out to yourself? Yeah. And how about to anybody else? Um, like in ninth, tenth grade. Uh -huh. I just started like telling people. Uh-huh. Yeah. Was your family cool with it, by the way? Uh, yeah. It's like a process, but yeah. It's getting there. <laughs> Dude, cool, man. And you didn't have any coming out kind of thing because you just was like, whatever. Yeah. When did you have your first boyfriend? Um, 14. 14? <laughs> All right. Awesome, man. Dude, when did you have your first... Can I ask you that question? Yeah, for sure. I can ask, her, I can ask you that question, but, you know, whatever, right? Yeah, like 18. What time? 18. Or 18? 18. All right. So, okay, so listen. And you are like, you're attracted to men. Like, you're not, you're never going to, you're never going to be with a woman. You're just going to be with men. And that's kind of how it is, right? And there's no yeah. question about that. Yeah. And same with you, bro. You, yeah, for sure. You're both going to be with men. All right. And, could, okay, is I, is there's, who, can I, could I invite someone down who identifies as bi? Anybody who's bi in here would like to come down? God, I, I just love this, man. Do you know how, like, when I first started teaching, you could, I could never do a class like this. Nobody would ever step up. All right, what's your name? Sophia. Sophia. And you identify as bi. Yeah. Okay, so, but, okay, so listen. So here, this is a continuum here, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, this is, now, if there's anybody else who's bi, who you realize, oh, wait, hang on, I want to add something to this, feel free to come down. But, okay, so here's Lexi, who's straight up straight. And here's Juan, who's straight up, who's gay up gay. All right, got it? Where are you on the continuum? Uh, you, this is half, here we are halfway, right here. Probably about here. Uh-huh, and what puts you there? Well, penises are kind of weird, man. All right, okay. <laughs> So listen, I will agree with that. Uh, by, my wife always says this, by the way, can I just say, that sure. it's just so weird to have an appendage that's just kind of hanging off your- Yeah, it's just out there. I know, Like, man. put it back. I know, see, I know. God, I so feel that, oh man. I would disagree. Do you would disagree? All right, All right. very well. <laughs> Okay, well, we're on the same team, man. Anyway, okay, but anyway, okay, but here, but why, so you feel more, you lean more toward being, so I'm gonna, we're just going to stay with it, toward being with women than being with guys. Yeah. Have you ever, and I don't, I'm going to ask you these questions, so I don't mean about have, sex, intercourse kind of stuff, I'm not asking that, but have you ever, have you ever been with a guy, have you been with a guy and a woman? Yeah. And... But in your experience leads you to say, eh, no, I'm going to kind of go down here. 
it depends on the person for me. Really, it's not about okay. gender. Okay. All the way. It's more so like, do they have good hygiene? Do they like the Beatles? Do are they funny? Like, <laughs> all right. That's okay, the stuff I, I care about. All right. <laughs> okay. And uh, <laughs> that's very funny, by the way. Yeah. Do they like the Beatles? Okay. Do you see yourself shifting at all? Like, but hang on. I want to go back to something. But if you said, you just right now said, now mind you, do, do you have people in the queer, in the gay community, lesbian community, gay or lesbian community who struggle when you say I'm bi? Uh, not really. Uh -huh. I, I don't know, like, I just joined Cutie Pop, so that's like the most, like, I've seen of, like, my community. Uh -huh. I come from a pretty conservative place, uh -huh. so I was like one of two people that was out in my school, so uh -huh. I don't really know. Uh huh. Okay. Because people in the bi community, it's like people who are mixed race or mixed ethnicity or whatever, you're always like being asked to join. Like either, look, either go this way or go this way, but being in the center is really difficult, right? Because people can't make sense. They want to make everybody, in, people want to make people into a binary. So given what you said, that it's, well, it's kind of based on the person. Well, then hang on. So come stand right here. So that would put you right here. It depends on the person. You might, you know, you might meet a, a guy, so straight, you might meet a guy who's just like, oh my God, I just fall in love with. He, he has good hygiene, he likes the Beatles, and he's really funny. That really ticks all the boxes. Yeah, it does indeed. <laughs> but, it, but, you, but you also could, but you said you leaned here. So I'm just wondering what it is that, why you would go here if that's the case, that you are just kind of open, waiting to see. And I'm not pushing you in a box, I'm just wondering. I don't know, I think like out of most people, I tend to be more attracted to women. It might be a maturity thing at this point. Mm -hmm. I feel like girls get more mature faster. Yeah. And guys, well, you know, sometimes they got body odor. Dude, sometimes guys, and guys don't know any, most guys don't know anything about being sensitive and it's just about sex, man. Oh, my God, please. There's a lot to learn. Dude, oh, my God. Men, can I just say one thing really fast? Slow it down. All right. That's okay. great advice. Oh, God, Jesus. Okay, so anyway. Um, all right, so what we're talking about right here is sexual orientation. So we're asking Sophia, what is your orientation? And she's like, well, my orientation is kind of, I'm here in the center, I'm bi, but I kind of lean, I would lean this way over here, right? For a wide variety of reasons. And one reason might be that, eh, it's just, just, the, just bodies and maturity and all sorts of things, right? Okay, got it? So this is what we're talking about with sexual orientation. It's like, what, what's this, uh, this inclination? It's not about, we're, and what, what we're talking about with sexual orientation isn't about like romance. I'm not asking about romance. I'm not asking about you falling in love. I'm not asking about all these things. What we're really talking about here is who are you just drawn toward in a sexual kind of way? And sexuality is complex, right? So I'm gonna ask you, like for a guy, who are you drawn toward immediately simply means like who who do you feel this physical energy to be drawn toward this physical energy in your body because that's what it the, for men it's much more like that for women and you can weigh in on this if you want it's but it's like if I say who are you drawn toward it's just like ah oh, just it's more it's not just your body it's like your heart your body your, it's like attraction is multi-dimensional Absolutely. So if I say to men, sexual orientation for Sophia here, or, or wait, hang on. Uh, Lexi. Lexi, as w women in women's bodies, it's a little bit more complex in that way, okay? But for guys, if I say, what's your sexual orientation? You know, it's just very kind of unidimensional. Yeah, because what I feel, when I feel aroused, that's what I'm drawn toward. But arousal for a woman is much more just more three-dimensional. Can I, would you agree with that? Sure. Juan, do you have any idea of that? You ever talk to women about yeah, this? I guess like, um, that's why I knew like faster, I guess, because I guess I'm more drawn to men than like to women. Mm -hmm. But yeah, for sure, like women are like more like 
they put more into like the arousal part. Like there is more behind that than just like the physical attraction, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's like, oh my God. My wife used to come into class and we, we did a class on um, kind of the sociology of, of sex and sex roles and she, she, she titled it The Needy Penis. And uh, it was really cool. It was a really cool class about the differences in the ways men and women approach um, sexuality and so on. Okay, so bisex do you see yourself as being bisexual kind of forever or do you, can you imagine it? I mean, you're really young, so. I think sexuality is fluid. I yeah. thought I was, I thought I was a lesbian for a long time. Uh -huh. And finding out that I liked boys is more of a shock than finding out I liked girls. Uh-huh. Because, no offense guys, but oh man. Yeah. Middle school was rough. Yeah, yeah. I would say, by the way, um, most people, if we really gave ourselves to it, I think that most everybody is bi at some level, right? You're either gonna be down here and be bi or be down here and be bi. But if we lived in a culture where homosexuality, meaning same-sex relations, were really okay and like, in, in, you know, it, it just it didn't really matter and we were socialized from a really young age, which increasingly, by the way, we are getting there. And as we are getting there, we are finding that more and more people, the percentage of the population that identifies as gay, lesbian, or bi, or one of any other kind of queer identities, is increasing as society just becomes much more open and tolerant and whatever we want to say about whatever the issues are. Because trust me, when I first started teaching 30 years ago, we would never have this conversation, ever. If, I, if, in, if in a semester I got one single student ever to identify as gay, then many of you do because you know, you're on the volunteer form as identifying as gay. So um, it wouldn't happen. But the idea is that as we open up more and people just can like open themselves a little bit, just like you, like you identified, you thought you were really a lesbian and then kind of surprised you that somehow you found yourself open up to men in some way. Well, we all, m the vast majority of us can go in that direction, can like float back and forth. The vast majority, right? We probably have an initial orientation one way or the other. So like Lexi or like Juan, we have kind of a, a, an orientation, but in any moment, you know, you just open your heart up and you can just be. As many of you know, because many of you have friends who have tried out, had ex one or two experiences, just like, hey, I want to just try that out and see what it is and so on. Um, okay, cool. Yo, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah. You, the two, two of you... Yeah, yeah, I think I'm done. Thanks, Sophia. Yeah, appreciate it. Hey, give her a hand, by the way. <laughs> two, why don't you hold there for a second, okay? So this is so this is what we're talking about with sexual orientation. It's your it's your general orientation toward, like, just who, like, it's not only who your heart goes out to, but who you're, who you're just like your your general kind of arousal goes out to. Okay, heart, arousal, everything. And again, for men and women, it's going to be a little different. And men, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, God, help, I, I hope you're gay then because <laughs> the women in your lives, your, the, who, in your love life are going to be very unhappy. All right, so listen, let, let me go to gender identity. This is a sociological concept in a way, gender. And very much it is. So like, you know, human beings... We, we have, we, as, you know, as we kind of, uh, as, 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 as society gets more complex, we have division of labor. So you got to, you know, some people do some jobs and other people do other jobs. The way people dress, the way they talk, um, the, the things that they do, how they, the things they're allowed to feel, the things they're allowed to say, the places they go. I mean, one thing after another, right? So if you go back, and see, there's this fundamental distinction. And the distinction is between Lexi as a woman who, who has, is biologically this being that we call a woman. Okay? Biologically. And Juan is biologically this being that we call a man. Okay? And so these two, just, it's, it's binary. 
okay? Man, woman. And as different cultures evolved, different cultures just decided, hey, there are some things that this human body, these people that have this human body should do and should be allowed to do. And there are some things that people who have this human body should do and be allowed to do. So therefore, there are going to be certain jobs in society, certain tasks that have to get done, and the people with this body are going to do those tasks, and the people with this body over here are going to do the other tasks, and the people who have this body are going to dress a certain way, and they're going to put certain things in their hair. They're going to carry, wear their hair a certain way and dress a certain way, and maybe they're going to wear paint on their face. They're going to do any number of things, and people who have this human body are going to do other things. And why didn't they just all do the same thing? There's no, there's no need to make a binary, just like bring them together and they're just like men, women, and they're exactly the same. Some cultures did that. There are many cultures around the world. There, there wasn't much of a distinction between men and women, between this body and this body. It just didn't matter. And in this culture, the United States right now, gender identity, it's becoming increasingly fluid. I mean, how many of you, look, if, you, if we had been at Penn State 60 years, I mean, you know, I had a neighbor who graduated from Penn State and, and, you know, she was here in the late 50s, early 60s. And women at Penn State, you, you would never have worn pants at all. Like if you're here, if you have pants on, you wouldn't have been wearing trousers or pants here at Penn State as a woman. Like you just didn't do that. So you, you, you couldn't do that. It wasn't part of it. So like, the gender identity. Men, women wore dresses. Even in a place like Penn State, not that long ago, men didn't wear dresses. Women wear makeup. Women can wear makeup. Men don't wear makeup, one after another. But in this culture, things start to get more fluid. And so like, you know, there are a lot of women in here, you're studying to be, you know, engineers and like these, what were typically the male professions. And there are men who are going to be elementary school teachers, right? Like, let's say Juan wants to be a kindergarten teacher. You know, years ago, that, when, that would never have happened, but now it happens. If those things start to open up in terms of gender identity, it's much more fluid. We float back and forth with it. That's not true in every culture today. There are many, you know, we did the, the class on hijabs, and we were looking at Arab culture and hijabs, and it's like, there are many cultures where the gender identity is pretty is, is really pretty strict still. Like women do, people with this body right here, Lexi's body, do certain things. And people with Juan's bodies are allowed or asked to do other things. And that's just the nature of it, right? That's how it operates. And that's, this, that's the gender identity. This is the sociological piece that comes in this. Like what do you do and how do you do it? And you can go one way or another. Like Juan today can dress like this and tomorrow could decide, hey, I'm going to do something completely different. I'm, I'm going to go to my classes. I'm going to wear makeup. I'm going to do sinus, whoever, just whatever it would be, right? And things that would be typically more in the past associated with women. Although today you understand that that becomes harder and harder in this culture to identify. Like, what is it that's associated with women? If Juan comes to, if he wants to come into class in a pink jumper, pink jumper, dude, like you with your purple pants, no one's probably, no one's going to say, dude, would anyone say anything to you if you showed up in a pink jumper? No, I don't think so. Well, I hope no. I, uh, they, no. Be they better know, like. I'm no, good. but they probably, <laughs> they probably wouldn't because they, they, nobody would care. It wouldn't matter. There'd be all sorts of things, right? That it just wouldn't matter. And if, when Lexi comes to, you, you come, come to class in like, je like overalls, you know what I mean? Do you think anyone would say anything? Probably not. Like men, like what would be men's work boots and overalls? Oh yeah, they'd look at me weird. Yeah. I don't think they would look, I don't think anyone would look at you. Probably. Maybe. Probably. Yeah, well it depends if, you, if your boots had like manure on them or something, you yeah. know what I mean? Like you came out of the field. But you get, you, so you see this, right? This is what we're talking about with gender. So gender, quote unquote, in this sense, is a fact. But it's really fluid in a culture like ours, where people are just bending stuff. I don't know what it's like, 
what's a man's, you know, we're fighting over the fact that, like, Lexi, like, if you, if, if she wants to go be a, a supervisor on a construction crew, let's say, that, you know, you're, you're an, let's say you're an engineering, mechanical engineering major, and you get a job with a big construction firm, and, and you want to, you're going to be, like, the, the supervisor on the, you know, wearing a hard hat and shit, there are going to be a lot of men who are going to look at you in a way and think you don't know what you're talking about, you don't, you don't have any experience, they're not going to want to listen to you, and that's going to be this gender role obfuscation. Like, so it's still happening, but much less than in the past, okay? And if Juan decides, hey man, I want to go be a kindergarten teacher, there are going to be some parents that are probably going to feel somewhat weird about having a, a young man as a kindergarten teacher, just because they are. I don't know, or any number of things, right? Like you're going to be uh, whatever it is, right? Okay, so you see that. That's what we're talking about with gender. So now, let's go to sex, biological sex. So, Lexi biologically is has this body, which we call, the, we say, so earlier it was the feminine and the masculine. Again, those are these terms that are just like floating together. I don't even know, again, we don't know what's feminine, what's masculine at all. Like, I don't even know anymore. You know what I mean? Are we there? We're all good? So now Lexi's got this body that we associate with a woman. And as a woman, with a woman's body, she has certain reproductive parts and just has a woman's body, man. Juan has a men's body, including, as Sophia kindly pointed out to all of us, the male appendage that hangs out, right? And so he has that, he's down at this end. You don't get more man than right here. So we have, you don't get more woman than right here. This is like, this is it, okay? This is woman, this is man. And so now the question is, oh, all right, now we're going to go in this non-binary world. We're going to kind of float back and forth. So at what point in time does Lexi, does she change? And hang on, I need like, can I, do you, do you mind? Can I? Just so you introduce yourself. So what's your name? Amy. Amy. Yes. Okay, Amy. So here. Now, so come down here so stand right behind Lexi so so same thing they have the same body okay same reproductive organs same everything all right but now at what point in time what does Amy change what what moves Amy down here what's gonna happen what does she do to move down here like what would move her here and then what would she have to do to move? So you don't mind if I just keep moving you? We're good? What's she have to, she's moving down here. What happens with Amy to move down here? And what, what would happen with Amy to move all the way down here and to be not Amy anymore, but be Andrew? Or be, and how close can she get to Juan to be like, really? And can she, one more, I'm going to keep moving you, all right? And can you get here? Can she ever get here? Can she get here? So we're, not, we're now doing the, nom, nom, the binary stuff. Okay, she, can she ever get here? So she actually becomes a man. It's like, uh -huh. how close can she get to be men? Okay, so we're going to go back, right? So now we're going to put her right in the center. So here's Amy right in the center. What puts her right in the center? So we're talking about bodies. This isn't about what she's dressed like, right? Because if we take Amy back 60 years, she's dressed like a man. She's dressed like a boy. She's masculine. And she would, if you were here at Penn State, there would be teachers who would tell you to go home and put a dress on, right? But, so you're very masculine in the way you dress. But not anymore, we change that. So she's just human in the way she's dressing. She's just a college student. But we're talking about sex. We're talking about biology. So here she is in the center. So what, what moves her from there to here? So once again, right? We're going to go back here. So she's, she is the same as Lexi. And now we're going to start to move her. Is it, what it, what, is it just in her mind? If Amy just decides like, hey, I'm, in my mind, I'm going I'm, to, I'm not, I'm, hang on, I'm not, I'm not here anymore. I'm not a woman like this anymore. I'm not really into this binary bullshit. Like, I don't, I just don't want to see myself as a woman. 
So I'm going to start calling myself something else. I'm going to just think about this differently. It's not going to be he, she. What if I want to be both? So come walk around. You, I'm continuing to walk you around. You're, you're cool with that, right? Um, so I want to be, actually, I just want to see myself in the center. And I'm going to be, I'm going to be they, them. Or I'm going to be, maybe I'm going to be here and I'm going to be she, they, or she, them. Or maybe I'm going to go down here and I'm actually going to be he, them. And the them is an indication of both. Them is actually really cool, by the way. This idea that someone says, hey, I'm not really into this. The whole gender, feminine, masculine, we don't have a way to do the feminine, masculine thing about being both. But we do have a term when it comes to sex, biological sex, and we often use it for gender, and we say they, them. And they means, if, if Amy says they, then what that means is both Juan and Lexi. Like, I'm going to take all this stuff on. And on top of it, I'm even going to be bi, and so I'm going to be so, so totally, I'm going to be they, them, bi, and like, I got it all. And that is awesome, because basically kind of what you're saying is, yeah, I don't want to get stuck down here at all. And I don't want to get stuck down there. I'm just going to kind of be here. But the issue is this. So, Amy, we're going to do it again. The issue is, when does Amy get to say something other than, I'm a she? When does she get to say that? What has to happen for her to say, nah, I'm not here anymore. I'm here. And I don't know. I don't want to be she anymore. I don't want to be locked into that. I want to go into the they, them thing. When does she get to say that? What, what, what does she have to do? What does Amy, I'm not even going to say she, what does Amy have to do to allow her to say, don't call me a she anymore? Then I'm going the non-binary route. Does she have to have change her physical body? Can she just in her mind decide? Does she have to have surgery? Does she have to cut her hair off? Does she have to change her name to more of what would be a, a, a boy's name? Like, Amy, what, just so you, what do you think you have to do to, to be standing right there? What do you think you would have to do? Um, I mean, and I feel like in a perfect world, like, I wouldn't have to do anything really because that's my decision. But obviously people would want you to look a certain way or sound a certain way. Um, so what do you mean you're deci- Okay, yes. People, why yeah. do you think people want that? Just so, I guess because like it's easier for people to like identify you because people have been like grown or like taught to um, like, for example, like what you said, like how I'm dressed, like people think, oh, it's more masculine. So she probably identifies like you know, to be more masculine, yeah. but not necessarily. Um, so, yeah, like how you said, I could, like, cut my hair shorter as, like, a guy would do um, if I wouldn't, you know. Okay, be. so in a perfect world, you would be able to just make that decision and say, like, oh, yeah, whatever, I'm not a she anymore. I'm a, I'm a they or a them or a whatever. Yeah. But in, and I'm going to push back on that. And in a perfect world... <laughs> That's just really confusing. You know what I mean? Like for me, I'm 61 years old. I got to say this. I didn't grow, I, I, you know, I, little kids right now, they're six and seven and eight year olds. They completely get this they, them stuff. For them, it's just like, are you with me on that? They, are you with me one on that? Like the little kids, they get it. It's just like they, them. Yeah, they get it. They're classmates. Oh yeah, that's so-and-so. They're, they are a they, not a she. And I'm I don't, I've been learning the English language for 61 years, y'all. It does not come easy to me. I see Lexi, I see a she. But if, or I see Amy and I see a she. But if you are just like, oh, I'm not a she, I'm a they. I'm like, oh, God, mind blown. Like, all right, on the basis, then my question is going to be on the basis of what? And you said, so you said, well, in a kind of perfect world, you could just say on the basis of I just want to be identified that way. And that's really confusing. And people are going to push back against that because it's like, well, you can't just, I mean, you can, mm-hmm. 
I could, you, I could just identify as black. I'm like 1.7% sub African, sub-Saharan African. So I could just be like, well, I'm 1.7% sub-Saharan African. So yeah, I'm black, whatever. And you could say, hang on, come back over here. You could say, I'm clearly a woman. There's no difference between me and Lexi. But you know what? I'm not into this binary thing. Just like Sam is going to say he's black because he's 1.7%, I'm going to say like, yeah, I'm, I'm non-binary. Don't call me a woman. I'm a they and a them. Right? You see? Yeah. Then what's the difference between you right there and then you come, keep coming out all the way down here? You're still a they and a them. Mm -hmm. Now you've made that determination. You were, a, you were a they, Amy, when you were down here. And you're a they when you're down there. But like what puts you down here is going to, you're never going to get here unless you have some kind of surgery or something's going to happen. You gotta, you're going to have to, to be here, you're going to have to alter your physical body somehow. Because you got to get closer to being like Juan. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. This is the nature of it, right? You don't, you don't get from there. Amy doesn't get from there to here without some kind of alteration in her body. Now, at what point in time, how much of her body does she have to alter for, for any of us? Here, Amy, come right back here in the center, right? Or actually, come back over here. How much of, so people who struggle with this, how much of her body does she have to change? Does she have to alter for any of us to sit back and say, Oh yeah, Amy is not a she anymore. I see Amy as more of a they, or I see Amy as more of a he. So if you walk this way, how much does she have to change in her body to be a he? Because right here, Amy can say I'm a he. And I'm like, all right, whatever, you're a he. Just like I could say I'm black. And you'd be like, all right, whatever, I'm black. There'd probably be, there's gonna be a lot of pushback against me saying that. But there's going to be a lot of pushback against her saying that I'm a he when in fact she hasn't done anything other than in her mind decide she's a he. So what does she have to do to make it acceptable to say like, yeah, I'm a he and she's, we're getting closer and closer to Juan and she's a he. And then so at what point do you say like, oh, she's definitely a he. Like top surgery, let's say she has top surgery. So top surgery for her would mean removing her breasts. Bottom surgery for her would be like, yeah, you got to create some kind of a, a, of an, a, bottom surgery could be lots of different things, by the way. But one bottom surgery could be like, well, we're going to, you're going to be more like a guy. So we can't create testicles, right? And she's never going to make sperm, but we could fashion some kind of penis um, out of her clitoris and, uh, you, know, uh, you know, all of her, we, uh, her appendages. Yeah, we could probably work that out. It's going to be really small, but we could do that. Dude, are you comfortable with that conversation? We would. Yeah, never. All right, you're good. All right. So, so then she's going to, so at what point in time then is she, like, we're going to say like, all right, she's a guy. Because I can show you photos of my, I have lots of former students who have transitioned who like, you would absolutely in a million years never have any idea that they used to be a man or used to be a woman. Okay. Are you cool? Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting, right? Yeah, yes. Like you can, you can think about this. Mm -hmm. All right, so here. All right, thanks, man. Thanks, Amy. Yeah. Hey, thanks to Amy, All right? Okay, so listen. So dude. And so, so for me as a man, what do I have to do? If, I, if I'm going to say, yeah, I'm in this non-binary world and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a they and a them or I'm actually thinking of transitioning and now I'm going to start to slowly refer to myself as a woman and not a man, right? So like I've had many people in my life who've been in this transition who I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah, you're a guy, you're a cisgender man, you, but you're, tr you're going to transition to a woman and like you take that first step and then you take another step and I'm still calling you he. And then you take another step and I'm like, yeah, but I'm like having a hard time with the he thing because I'm not really seeing it. 
you're, we're gonna, but I'm gonna help you. Let's, let's work with it. Let's play with it. Let's use he for you. Let's see how it works. And this is me going back 40 years, y'all. I've been like, my first experience with people who, who transitioned is 45 years ago, right? So I'm like, all right, we'll work it, right? I have this great story of a, of a friend who was transitioning. First, she was a lesbian. Then she decided she wasn't a lesbian. And I, I knew that she was struggling. So I had her go listen to a woman who had been M to F, male to female, and transitioned over. And I said, you got to go hear this person talk. And because this is, I, I, in my mind, I'm like, this is where you're headed, right? And so she was still a she. The next day after the talk, she comes, she comes to meet me and she's like, man, it, the, my whole world just blew up and I saw, I see my path. And I'm like, yeah, I knew that was your path. So she told her parents, the good news is they were very Christian. The, the, the good news is I'm no longer a lesbian. The better news is instead of a daughter, now you have a son because I feel like this is my path. So, you know, we work with you know, the, the male, pro, Lori and I work with male pronouns with her, like him and say like, all right, we're going to use him. And it just worked. It was just like, oh, it felt really good. But the kicker, the kicker, and I love telling this story, is one day, she, he was leaving town. And we were, we were mostly never making mistakes. But once in a while, we'd make a mistake. We were in our apartment. And the three of us, were, it was really hot. It was like 90 degrees in the apartment. We were drinking beers, right? And we were, uh, so... He was, you know, sitting in a chair like, like this. And I was sitting back like this. I had my shirt off. And because it was so hot. And Lori looks at him and as he's sitting there like this. And he, she says, hey, you can take your shirt off if you're a guy. Like, it's whatever, it's fine. Because he was for sure going to transition but hadn't transitioned. Dude, so he's like, yeah, all right. Takes his shirt off, takes his sports bra off, which he had been wearing forever. He was a student athlete here at Penn State and but just holding his breasts back so no one would see his breasts. So even from my, when I first met him, it, so this is what he was really working with. Took his sports bra off and holy, had really huge breasts. And I'm like, oh, fuck. You, think, you know... And it was just like, he had these bright. So here's this guy who's a guy. He's like, he was sitting there drinking his beer like, like a guy's drink a beer. Dudes, like you drink a beer, you know what I mean? Just like, yeah, what the fuck? I'll take another beer. Yeah, whatever, right? He was sitting there like that, but with two breasts hanging down from his body that, I had, that we had never seen because he had been wearing sports bras his whole life. And Lori and I looked at him and we were like, dude, you are a guy, we will never ever make that mistake again because you are so clearly a guy. God, take those things off as quickly as possible. Like he was so clearly a guy and it wasn't until we saw his breasts that we knew how just bizarre it was. Did they oh, get those, remove those. And then that idea that he had been here until he came out as a lesbian and then stayed here. And then finally was like, nah, we're going to go here. So now he's about no surgeries, no nothing. And then suddenly in that moment, we said, dude, you're here. You're not here. You probably, you, 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 dude, this, this, is, this right here, this is for those of you who are dealing with this issue of sex and biology of sex. This right here is for men who have the body parts like Juan and like me. You're born as a man. You have testicles. You have a penis. You have this, you have that. You're just a man, right? Our, this friend of ours is, is not going to be here, right? I mean, I schooled him. I, we had long conversations about what it's like to have a penis and like, oh my God, like, you know, he's like, well, tell me. I just want to know like what happens and like what happens you get caught between your legs and your testicles and what is it? What is it? You know, all sorts of shit. It was a really, really cool conversations. But he's here. And if you met him, you'd be like, oh, you never in a million years think that this man was anybody, anything other or anybody other than a man. But he's not here. He's here. And he's a man. He's no less a man, but he's, but he's here. So the people in the community would say, yeah, okay. Okay.